Now then, welcome to another Harris video. As you can hear there, my cheapo mini lathe is in bad need of some love. Those bearings sound like a bag of nails. I'm taking the opportunity as well of swapping out the old brushed motor for a brushless motor recovered from a commercial sewing machine. This week we're doing the motor, another doing the bearing will probably be next week. Okay, let's crack on. Okay, so this is the motor I've got to replace the old one with. So this is off an industrial sewing machine. It is brushless, single phase, runs on 50 to 60 hertz, 220 volt AC power. It's 550 watts, about three quarters of horsepower. And it says it is 4 nm angular movement. It's got a operational speed range of 200 to 6,000 RPM. The old motor I've just taken off, I have a feeling I saw a thing on it saying it went up to 2,000 RPM. We've got other things that came in the package. So what you also get is this speed controller and readout. We've got that to shoehorn in. Instructions on the back of the Chinese, but they have actually sent an English language manual along with it, which is very handy. And we have this on off switch. So it suddenly occurred to me, really, I need to test this before I go any further, just to make sure it is working. So there's the on switch, lights up as it should. You can see we've got these spinning round and round and round. And then if I actuate this lever, it is a slow start. And you can see that's presumably 600 RPM. I can't believe it's six, it's clearly more than that. 1400 perhaps and that's 3000 that seems reasonably likely the spec says it can go up to 6000 um, and there's some paperwork with it that I think is going to show me how to program it but um, I mean that's good enough for now that's pretty good I'm pleased with that very smooth very quiet right that's enough faffing about Let's crack on with the swearing. First job to do is remove the old motor and control box. Okay, so here's my little pile of bits building up. This is the old control box. Gonna have to have a look to see how much of that we can pull across. The old motor itself, uh, and the old motor guard. And then we've got the little pile of bits from the lathe head disassembly. But the big news is the new engine the new motor fits really well, apart from the um, this bit on top. If I remove that, it will in fact slide under there really neatly. And the wire there, I think we will be able to lead it through there. Although, I may have to cut that end off and then reattach it, which I'm not anxious to do, but we will see what we can do with that. And as if by magic, the bracket is now gone. It fits there really nicely now. There's a little bit of machining yet to do, which we'll see in a minute, but uh, I'm very happy with that. The wires come through there. You can see there were these two original slots milled in there, or cast in there. And I've opened both of them up because I'm not sure at this point which side I'm going to have the motor, whether it needs to be further that way or further the other way. One of the things I am going to have to deal with, and that is that the motor is further out from trying to put the old case on. I think it's about half inch further out, maybe 20 millimetres further out than the original motor, which means that the belt is going to need to be longer from there 
to the centre of where it goes there. OK, so I've got a bit of machining yet to do to the top of the new motor. This is to take into account a bolt head on the underside of the head. And then it's fabricate a couple of rails to secure the motor to the drip tray and head casting. So I've got some very rough old box section here, doesn't have to be pretty, which I'm chopping up to form two pieces of angle and I've cut a little triangle to go on the end of each just to cap them off so I can use that then to bolt them to the head casting. And then I just need to drill some holes and cut some slots for the fasteners to go through. So there's one side done, the bracket with an end welded on. And there we can also see, I think, that channel. I've had to gouge out a couple of millimetres off the motor itself, off the motor casing, in order for it to fit under there, which you can see it now does quite comfortably. You can see my bracket there, you can see one of the brackets there. If we get a sneak look inside, I'm very happy with that, that's really stable. There's another bolt through to the engine further along, along the base, and there's also a bolt right at the back, I don't know if you can see, um, that, um, that bolts the back of the rail to the lathe chassis. And on the other side there you can see um, there's another identical bracket, pretty much identical. And I've also put the fan, there was a plastic fan that went on the end of the electric motor's um, spindle. So I put that fan back on and butchered the cowling a bit too, just to um, create some kind of wind tunnel there. The wires seem to be lining up really nicely as well with the slot and where they come out of the back of the motor. With a bit of a uh, bit of firework, we managed to make that work in the end. Okay, so it's at this point in the proceedings we need to talk about pulleys. Now, what I also need to figure out at this stage is whether the pulley that I just took off the old motor is going to fit the new motor. Okay, so so we can see clearly it isn't. Um, let's just have a little look on the calipers here. That seems to be exactly 15 millimeters. And that is exactly one centimetre, ten millimetres. I just wanted to run you through the pulleys. This was the... no, tell a lie. This was the pulley off the original motor, right? Which I bored out to whatever the shaft size is. I think it's 15 mil. But my drill bit was bent, so it uh, blew out too much, which meant that the pulley was not running um, plumb on the axle, on the spindle. So then, this by the way, is the original pulley that came with the motor, which I took off, just a standard V pulley. So then I bought this, which is basically the 15mm version of the original, right? That I think was an 8mm shaft or something on that um, original motor. So this is the 15mm. So I put that on, but the problem with that is the readout, let me show you. The readout on the top there shows the speed of the motor in 100 revolutions. So having this on there, a small one on there, and a bigger one on there, meant that that readout would then become wrong. And I'd have to apply a lot of maths on the fly. So, cut long story short, what I did was I found one of these drive pulleys, um, the same diameter as the one it was going on to. I got myself a slightly longer belt. I mean, I've sort of avoided giving dimensions and that kind of stuff because everyone's going to be different. No one's going to buy exactly the same motor. 
I mean, maybe they are. Maybe it's just that one motor and the sewing machine motor, and that's what everyone gets. I don't know. Anyway, cut a long story short. If you do the setup that I've done, this is, I think, a 9mm broad belt, 9 or 10mm wide belt, and it's 475mm um, long, and it's a uh, 5mm pitch. And that, can you see, actually seems to be, focus on there, that actually seems to be snugging in quite well. It's about right. Doesn't seem to have a problem getting in. It's probably a bit big for this. I don't know. I don't know enough about these things. But it's gripping and it's turning. That's good enough for me. And also, if it snags, it, it will actually hop a tooth. It won't break anything else, which is good to know. I'd rather have the failure on the belt um, than in the machinery. OK, well, that's the pulleys hopefully taken care of. The next little burst of excitement comes from shoehorning the new control panel into the old control box. And this here is the controller board. That's the old controller board that came off. That's, this is for um, a brushed motor. So you can use um, pots like this to control the speed. This, on the other hand, is brushless. So the control board is slightly different. So when this moves, it's uh, it's on springs. It's quite stiff springs actually, sprung loaded. As you do move it, that end is a magnet, and it's acting on something on the underside of the controller board, moving past it, indicating that you're going up and down the scale. So I can't really turn that into a, a dial knob. That I uh, I can't see a way of doing that. So I'm going to have to think about how I actuate this. What I've also done is cut out the um, display panel from the original plastic cowling, installed that in the back of the, this is the original metal control box, controller box. So I've fitted that on the inside, moved the, um, the circuit board across. Here's the plug that fits in here on the controller board and it doesn't look too bad from the outside. I reckon to have the on-off switch, I reckon to have the on-off switch kind of around there and think of some creative way of covering that up. So the plan is to cut away this slot here so that that actuator arm can move down and I can bolt the underside of that onto the inside of the controller box. That's the plan. OK, so here's the board and mechanism fitted in. I had to crop this end bit. I had to cut a bit of the PCB there and also this metal frame underneath just to make it fit in. But I think the wires have gone very nicely. There's the power switch that came off the sewing machine motor. There's the speed display ditto. Those two are the connectors that go to the mains live. There's this uh, Professor Brainstorm contraption on the front here. Now, because the, um, the speed is regulated by this lever, because originally it was meant to be operated by a foot pedal for a sewing machine, so I haven't thought of a way of being able to put like a normal uh, dial on there like there was on the original controller. So what I've done is I've just, I mean, this is just for now, just so I can make the thing work. And uh, I had a spare little handle knocking around and some bits and pieces. And you may laugh, and uh, I am laughing, but it works. So what I want to do is just kind of switch this on, see, see what happens. OK. And there's the LCD board going. So let's try twirling the handle. There we go. There's the shaft turning around happily. That's showing, uh, seems to be flashing a bit, but that's actually showing 20, um, to which apparently you put two more zeros on. So that's 2000 RPM.
Right, with a maximum of 3,000 RPM. And there we go, so that's just a quick update, I'm happy about that. Now it's only loosely bolted in at the top, I've got to sort these wires out that are um, strewn around everywhere. But so far, so good. Alright, so here we are, all, uh, all back together again. You can see that I've cleared away all the change gears, all that gubbins that was on the back, even the um, lead screw. I took off uh, a gear drive for doing that has meant that I could strip out a whole lot of crap here that was giving me backlash and um, imprecision when I was trying to do things so um, now the lead screw is permanently engaged and I fitted this uh, good sized handle, I don't know what it is, six, six inch handle or something at the back that manually drives the lead screw I have noticed a dramatic improvement in the quality and finish of my parts since I've done this. And the only reason to have all those change gears and all that complexity there is for single point threading. You know, it's a 7x14 lathe. Any threading I need doing, I always do manually. I've got all the taps and dies. Um, I can use the lathe to, to help with that anyway. I've got a, a die holder that will start the die off nice and plumb for the facility that I got from from the all those change gears it introduced a complexity and a lack of precision in the everyday running of the lathe even when I wasn't cutting threads that it just wasn't worth it if ever I feel the need to start cut, cutting fancy threads then I will probably look at a electronic lathe project um, electronic lead screw project and to be honest, it probably wouldn't be on this lathe. The other thing I wanted to point out is I did tidy up that uh, Heath Robinson contrivance there, made it slightly less Heath Robinson-esque. Um, you can see it's sprung loaded now and it's side mounted on the machine. I cut the uh, a large chunk of that lever off and now the screw bears directly on. It's kind of okay, Let's uh, let me show you screw it down what I like about it is it um, it does give me some fine control on there and there's the machine buzzing away happily I haven't done the bearings yet so I'm not going to try cutting anything at this stage but uh, I have to say I'm reasonably happy gonna have to perhaps think about making a cover for the back the original plastic cover no longer fits um, because of the motor there she is spinning away happily so as I say next week we will be doing the bearings and then taking a cut just to see how far we get so I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time and if you've got any ideas certainly suggestions you can probably tell I'm really new to all this still learning Really, if you've got any ideas, suggestions, tips, letting me know what I've done wrong, letting me know what I can do righter, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope to see you next time.